Welcome back to getting started with Win2D. This is episode 7 and today we're going to capture all the mouse events and then we're going to push these events into the input manager and let's take a look at the game engine as it stands right now. We coded the input manager last time and now we're going to actually hook up the mouse so that the mouse will insert its events into the input manager which then will be passed to the scene which then will be passed to all the scene items. With uh, that said, let's get this started, all right? All right, first I need to make sure that this is actually the project that we ran last time. It should be a guide going southeast to the screen. And there he is, all right. And this is the input manager which we coded last time with a few fixes that I did, such as we um, put this all in the lock statement here, not uh, the add input item. So what we need to do is actually, the first thing we have to do uh, is actually define a, um, a generic input that uh, models a mouse. And we're going to derive it from our very simple generic input here. So let's get started, right? I'm just going to call this mouse generic input. And we're going to derive it from generic input. It's that simple. And let's think about all the properties that we need to describe a mouse, right? Well, we need the x precision. We need the y precision. We need the status of each button, left, middle, and right. Mm. Maybe the status of whether any of the buttons are down. And what type of mouse input it is. Because you can have a lot of in, m, different type of mouse um, inputs, such as when you move the mouse, we want a mouse move. When you click the mouse, we want a, a click event, which is going to be the same thing, right? So there's quite a few mouse types. So let's define those right now. Okay, and we're going to use something called a enum, which is basically a static list of predefined uh, items. So mouse generic input items. Well, I always usually start out with an unknown. Um, there's a mouse move. Right? Mouse move. What else is there? Mouse up, I think. Mm, now let's do mouse press. Yeah, when the mouse is pressed. And a mouse release when you release the button and a mouse click. Those are our generic inputs. And let's define the button types, which is the same thing, which is going to be an enum again, mouse and button type. And for now, we just going to support none, left button, middle button and the right button. Okay. Is that compiled? Am I didn't do anything right? Okay, that's fine. Okay. So we have to write a constructor, which is pretty easy. Yeah. And float x y and I'm going to call the base constructor. I'm going to call this mouse input. Okay. What this does is we're going to create, when we create a mouse generic input, it actually creates a generic input as its base class and calls, um, puts a input string into this constructor. 
So basically, you're going to have a default name of mouse input. That's all it is. OK. Now, properties, I've got an x position, y position. So let's make that. And that will probably want to be a float because uh, the mouse movements are pretty precise nowadays. X position, Y position. Mm. Now that will be that done. Now the status of each button, left, middle, and right. Okay. These are going to be just fuel boolean. So if left button press, and then pull is middle button press, and boolean is right button press. And these will be set to true when. Uh, a user presses down that specific button and set to false when they release it. All right. Now we need a status to see if any of the buttons are down. So we just call this a mouse down. And Type of input. This is where we're going to use the en enum that we use that we created uh, just a while back. So mouse generic input type, and then I'm just going to call this mouse input type like that. Now let's take a look at what we have here. We have basically everything to describe the mouse input pretty well down. So with any if you do, if we do decide to pass a generic uh, mouse input into the input manager, we have everything we need. You know, the X, Y location, uh, which buttons are pressed, um, if the mouse is down, and what type of uh, input that was. Was it a none, a left? I mean, sorry, it, was it a mouse move, mouse press, mouse release, or mouse click event? All right. And we have to finish this constructor, constructor before we leave. So. Give it default walk, default values here, and let's finish all the defaults here. And for the generic input, this is why I have the unknown because we don't actually know what type of input it is uh, when we randomly create it. So. Unknown. There we go. Now we created a great uh, input type to contain all the information about the mouse. Now what we need to do is hook up the event handlers such that we will create the mouse input and not be pushed down to the input manager. Now in Windows, um, it is event based, so it's not something where you, in assembly where you query a certain interrupt. Or uh, in real-time operating system, you have access to uh, the serial ports and or the DMA controllers. Okay. So in Windows, especially in the uh, Universal app, we just hook, we just want to hook up the mouse events to a specific function. And to do that, let's go to our main XAML page here. All right, that's my screen. It's pretty small right now. Let's uh, make it 50% uh, so we can see it better. There it is. Now, this is our whole canvas we did in episode one. So this is actually, as you can see the tab here or the computer screen, it covers the whole screen. So basically we want to hook up our events to that. Now we'll click that and in the event, uh, handlers, which is this uh, lightning bolt action, just click on that, and you will see that uh, these events are. And in previous episodes, we create, we hooked up the create resources and the draw. Now, what we want to hook up is the mouse events. 
and in Windows there's pointer enter, pointer exit, pointer move, pointer press, and pointer release. Now we're not too concerned about pointer enter and pointer exit. We are concerned about pointer move, pointer press, and pointer release. Okay, well let's hook them up by double clicking. There's one. There's two. And there's three. Now, uh, pointer move happens when a user moves the mouse anywhere, uh, anywhere um, on the screen. Okay. Now, in each one of these events, all we have to do is create a mouse generic input and push it down into the input manager. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. So let's do that. Call this GI. Now, uh, how about mouse generic? Yeah. Like that. And we need an X here and a Y here, right? That means we somehow have to get the position of the mouse on the screen. And to do that, we just get it right from the event that is passed into this event handler. So it passes us this thing called pointer router event args e, and this is where we're going to get our, um, our current position of the mouse. And we want it relative to the sender right here. And it, it's great Microsoft, they also give you which object uh, um, basically through the event. So the canvas through the event, it has the points, and then we're going to capture it, and make our own genetic input, and then push it down into the input stack. All right. So they have P, and the pointer has a position here, X, but it's a double. So we have to you know, convert that to uh, a float. Maybe we should have made it a double in the generic input, but oh well, we're going to keep it the way it is right now. So basically, we created a new mouse generic input with the current position of the mouse. And we're going to name this mouse move based off the event here. And we need to set the input type to mouse move and then we need to set the status of all the uh, all the buttons so that's, that's why I have all these right here the The event args basically has everything we need. And as you can see, these match up to the uh, most generic input that we just created. And then I think there's one more, which is mouse down, right? Mouse down, which is basically the or of all of the three buttons, the status of the three buttons. And this is a or operator, and that means bitwise or. Oops. So this, this mouse down line here, let's take a look at it very carefully. Mouse down is true if any of these are true. That's what I'm trying to say. So if, any, if the person pressed the button down, then the mouse down is down. That's basically what it comes down to. Now what would they do? 
we already set up all the variables that we need and we just have to uh, push this down into the input manager. Now the input manager sh should get it and then uh, pass it on to each of the scenes uh, on, on the update call. Okay, so now on, on, on these other ones, it's basically just a copy of the function that we just did here. And we just copy and paste it into here and into here. All right. Now the, we have to change some stuff, which is basically the type and the name. So mouse move, this be mouse press or mouse down. Let's call it mouse down. And then the type will be mouse press right here. Basically the same. Now let's do the point to release here. This is mouse up, I think I call it. Yeah, mouse up. And change the type to mouse release. Now each each of the times that the mouse has moved, we press something, we release the button, it adds a uh, event item onto the input stack or the input manager. Now this creates a lot of inputs and maybe in the next couple episodes we'll go through and clean up all these inputs so the program doesn't uh, seem like it's lock up doing um, uh, responding to all the inputs. Okay, But for now uh, we're going to make this easy and just have it this way for now. Okay, Now now what we want to do is uh, modify the scene, the current scene um, template to see if what we just programmed actually worked. So let's uh, let's do that. So basically, I want something like on the screen that shows the X position of the mouse, the Y position of the mouse, and the status of the buttons. Okay, that's what I want. So we're just going to go to the generic scene and add in a bunch of debug properties. So. So we're going to call this as x, y, and we want to see if the left button is down and the middle button and the right button. Now these are just debug properties that we put in just to make sure the code works. In reality, when we release something, we'll take this out. So what do I want to show? X, Y, the status of the buttons. That's practically it. Now we want to um, actually draw the status of those buttons somewhere, right? So in the draw function, we're going to do we're going to do that, which is, I think it's just called draw text. Okay, so in a string, a vector two point, and a color. Okay, so x position like this plus uh, yeah, this looks good. That's our string. A vector two point. Okay. Graphics campus numerics vector two. Okay. We want to draw this at zero and one hundred. And the color, I don't care. white be fine. Now I want to see if this actually works there. Let's not take two arguments, huh? No. I think I think what we need let me go with hmm. 
you know, this type of vector actually, you know, with that, it's just system.numerics. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, add that namespace in here. There we go. That's what I want. 0, 100. Now, what we should have is uh, x, and I think it can be 0 on the screen. So x, 0. Okay, there we go. Now we need the status of the y. So there we go. We're going to put this on 20. And we need the status of each of the buttons. So left button, middle button, right button. There we go. Twenty thirty forty X Y left button middle button and uh, right button. All right, so it looks like we need a little bit more space there uh, on the vertical. So 140, 160, and 180. All right, nice. So basically what we want to do is when we move the mouse, we expect the zero and Y to change to the location of the mouse based off the inputs that we just made. And then the status of each of the buttons would also change based off which button we click. Okay. So how do we change these variables x, y, left buttons from the um, stuff we program here? Remember that each of the time each each of the events are pushed into the input stack, which then is passed along into the scene which then calls update, right? So in the your specific scene that you want to capture, all you have to do is first update all the items and then well, respond to the specific uh, uh, mouse events. So let's do that. So in, if input is generic mouse input, and you know, we're just going to convert it to that. So basically, we're asking it should it, it, the input manager. So what happens is the input manager will pass the mouse input into the scene update function, and that's what we're doing here. And what I'm asking is if the, the input, the current input, is the mouse input, and then we're going to process it. So, all right. So we'll process, and then now that we have the input, let's change all the properties based off the input that we have. So this dot x is that. So basically, we're copying all the properties over into the properties that we made here. So in essence, it updates the properties based off the current uh, mouse input. All right. So this will um, update the properties and hopefully when we move the mouse now the next time that the scene draw it actually will draw the current input items as it stands so let's test this out here there it is so as you can see it's finally stable um, and when I move my mouse to the uh, top left corner it should decrease on the X and decrease on the Y See how the number decreases there? And there we go. And it, uh, like I said before, it's generated a lot of mouse uh, event items. And we need some way 
to speed this up because when I go like this, you can see it still goes, my mouse has stopped, but the, the events are still catching up, right? So we need a way to uh, speed up that up and we'll do that in the next episode of Ubuntu. But now that we got the mouse inputs, that's nice. Now let's see if the buttons work. I have to wait until I stop because there's so many inputs there. And there it is. There's my left button. There's true, false. And there's me clicking it. Right button here. True, false. I'm me clicking it. And here's the middle button. And there you go. So we we have successfully captured the mouse. Um, so for the next episode, what I want to do is get rid of this effect here, where the uh, when we actually generate uh, a lot of uh, events like this. Uh, we don't process we don't process them one at a time if it's a mouse input so as you can see the numbers keep changing in if my mouse is stopped that's because there's so many events uh, that windows push onto the stack and that's why we want to create our own input manager because we don't want windows to handle anything but given uh, us the events okay now imagine if we had to actually reply to all these events in the game that would slow quite down so what we learned today is we let me close this down sorry about that now let's review this episode okay so what we did today is we created uh, mouse inputs which are can be unknown mouse move mouse press mouse release and we haven't done mouse click and that'll be saved for the next episode as well now button types left middle right or none we created a mouse generic input based off the regular inputs we give it some properties and we, and we have a nice constructor the second thing we did was we hook up all the events because the windows has to have some way to give you the mouse input and we do that by hooking up the events uh, on the canvas for pointer move, pointer press, and pointer release. And in each of these events, which are called, we generate the generic input item that we created um, a few minutes ago. Uh, and then we push that onto the stack. So what happens is now we have a bunch of items on the stack. So when the game loop runs, uh, on the previous episode, we get the current input from the stack, we call update to it, and then we call draw. And it this goes endless and endless until somebody quits the game. Now each time we call update, we pass the generic input into the scene. So that's what happens here. And then we update all the items in the scene, as well as our debugging messages, which shows the status of each of the uh, properties. Now let's play this again. There we go. As you can see, uh, working pretty well. Um, thank you for watching this episode. Uh, if you like this video, please thumbs up. And I will see you next time when we fix this lag, which is not really lag because Windows is just giving you way too many messages that we, we can't handle in time. Okay. Till next time. Uh, have a good day.